The thing about this integration phase is that you know what you want to do intellectually. You know, like, okay, so I want to blend these colors and um, try to retain some of the dark color, the black that was in there. I know that I want to do that without knowing how it's actually going to happen. Hey everyone, I'm Mary Ann Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. We had snow a couple days ago here where I live and the studio is surrounded by beautiful white land and the sun is bright and shining and it's a great day for me to talk with you about going back into the paintings behind me that I spoke about in my last video. And the last video was talking about how you, when you feel stuck with paintings and how you get out of being stuck and then me revealing which paintings I'm currently stuck on. So as you can see, I have worked on this painting since we last talked with each other <laughs> on video. And so I thought I'd share with you where I am with the painting at this point in time and then give you a little peek into how I'm going to go back into it. So let's take a look at the painting. I came in and without really trying to um, do it this way, in other words, I'm knee deep in what I call the third phase of integration. That means that I'm integrating my emotional connection to the piece. You know, what is it that I really want from this piece? What, what am I connected to? Which, by the way, can change from day to day, from mood to mood, from weather um, forecast or, you know, what's going on in the weather for that day to the next day. It can completely change how you see a painting. So, when I went back into this, I was thinking, okay, so it was, it was that snowy Friday day and felt very cold and very blanketed. And so the painting kind of went in that direction. Um, I ended up losing the warm uh, taupey color that was in here, which I really liked. And, but the thing about this integration phase is that you know what you want to do intellectually, you know, like, okay, so I want to blend these colors and um, try to retain some of the dark color, the black that was in there. I know that I want to do that without knowing how it's actually going to happen. So true to form, this, there's absolutely no way I could have predicted that this painting would end up looking like this, but here I am. So now at this point, I have to determine what do I want from this painting now? And so I'm thinking that my current challenge is that as much as I like having this dark area, um, either I'm thinking of getting rid of it entirely and bringing the white up more or bringing the black up higher. The problem with bringing the black up higher is that I'm trying to avoid another composition where I'm cutting it at the third mark um, of the three thirds of a painting because I'm sort of tired of doing that. <laughs> and I seem to be doing that a lot in my paintings lately. So um, I'm still really unsure about what I want in terms of a composition here. And so what's happening is that there's kind of a fight going on inside, a, a debate going on inside me between um, what's naturally coming out and what I intellectually want. So what I intellectually want is a more dynamic composition. What must be happening somewhere inside me unconsciously is no, you need complete and total expanse. That's what you're feeling. So in my experience, what always 
ends up leading forward is what's happening inside. And if you try to go against that because your, your thoughts are saying, yeah, I really want something more interesting or more dynamic, and your inside is saying, hmm, no, I, actually, I need this wide open, blended color space. The wide open, blended color space has to be honored. So as I'm talking to you, I'm realizing that's what I have to do here at this point in time. So, and yet I like this little piece of black. So actually I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll just make it even smaller and blacker. Um, and actually I have been painting on it both ways. So let's look at it this way here and um, see what you think. I think it's actually more interesting in this direction, but my little idea of having a, a black box here, it's going to look a bit like a third eye at the top, I think. Uh, maybe that could be interesting. So all of these are thoughts that I've been um, going around in my, my head and my being, and so I'm going to go into this painting and you can be sure 100% that what actually happens is different than anything that I've just said because that's the way this process works. So once I get into this, I'm going to then have to make some strategic uh, compositional decisions and at the same time allowing my inner expression to come out and lead the way. So join me. I'll be here in just a minute. Before I get started, I want to just quickly mention that the compositional references that I talk about and the four phases that I refer to in the process of making a painting are all in a free booklet which you can download by simply going to the Whole Artist Mastery website, put your email in, subscribe to the mailing list, and you will get a free PDF downloadable booklet that has all of the information about the four phases, the phrases that go with each phase, compositional checkpoints, and much more. It's a great resource, and so I invite you to go and sign up and get your free booklet right after this video. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get started here. And um, so I've decided that what I'm gonna start with is top down with um, kind of an icy blue which has a little bit of uh, Hansa yellow. So the colors, I'm working with Gamblin oil paints here, and the colors that I'm using, this is uh, manganese blue, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of Hansa yellow light over here, and you know, just a tiny, tiny amount here to mix in. So I don't want it to turn to green, but I want to warm it up a little bit because one thing about this painting is that it's, it needs a little warmth in the other areas besides just the red. So before I do anything with this, I'm going to hold it up and see, is this the right color? I might need a little bit more blue. Um, so um, my studio, is currently only being heated by one heater. So it is a little bit nippy in here and at night it gets even nippier. So my paints are just a little bit um, hard. <laughs> Not quite as willing to be worked as they are when it's a little warmer out. Okay, so let's hold this up and see. All right, I think that's good. Now I'm going to take a little bit of walnut oil here. Actually, it's walnut alkid oil. And just put one drop in. This stuff goes a long way. And I don't want it to get very liquidy. I just want it to be a little bit more spreadable. So I know it's, it's hard for you to see any difference. I can feel just a little bit of difference as I'm mixing. Um, okay, so now I'm going to take my squeegee here and drag it through the paint like that. I have about this much paint on my squeegee. 
And now I'm going to start up here and pull down. And continue to pull down. brush and start to blend this the brush I'm using is a Princeton uh, 6100 series which is a synthetic white bristle brush it's softer than natural bristles and it's a size 20 so you can get a really nice blending back and forth so let's see um, now i'm going to stand back just a little bit to see what i have it's always really important to stand back after you do something especially radical uh, and a radical application from where you were and see what you think. So yeah, I find this is, this is interesting. Let me get this mark out of here. Now I'm going to come in and use what I call my ruined filbert technique. This is also a Princeton 6100 series synthetic brush and it's a filbert size uh, 16. And this is what I call my ruined filbert technique. Many of you have seen me work with this technique before. Uh, it's in place of using a pom-pom brush. I don't know if that's the real name of it, but you know, the, the brushes that look like pom-poms. But I find that those bristles fall out so easily. And now I'm going to come back in with my squeegee and stand back just a little bit. Say, okay, and now... I'm going to rub these marks here. So I'm working the paint with a number of different tools all at once. The, br the brushes, the squeegee, and the rag here. Now the rag could be a little problematic at this point because this is still pretty wet. Um, so I could go like this. And it's working pretty well. And you know, you might be wondering, well, when do you use which? Well, you just, I just kind of feel my way around that. Um, the rag blends like this, a larger surface than the ruined filver and, and it also pulls away paint more so I'm pulling away the paint and what's happening underneath is that you're beginning to see this color underneath a little bit more um, so now I'm going to turn this upside down Let's see what I have this direction it's really important to, to look in Two, at least two directions. Now this is clearly going to be either up here or down here in terms of the orientation. At least it's clear to me. <laughs> um, I could turn it this way. We can look at it this way here. In my opinion, no. <laughs> and um, Same here. Uh, and again, I think it goes back to what's naturally occurring within me uh, in terms of what my inner being is needing to express. And, and so that's really the, the crux of where I am right now is, you know, how does what I feel inside complement or align with what I would like this painting to convey. And what I would like this painting to convey is 
a sense of hope in the sea of gray, in neutrality, uh, a place, a beacon of um, respite, of light, vibrance, and um, complemented with the neutrality of uh, gray, the mystery of gray, and the comfort of gray. So that they both, in their respective ways, provide comfort. So uh, let me stand back again. And what I'm liking at this point is that this is not straight across. So I think I might bring a little bit more down here. I'm going to drag the squeegee through and pull them out a little bit more. Some interesting textures beginning to develop. You can also rub with the tip of the squeegee. I'm more intrigued now than I was. I'm just going to do one more thing before we close, and that is to come in here and make this a little more um, not so evenly um, worked, I guess. And it's different color palette for me, that's for sure. Okay, so that was just a little taste of the journey I'm on with this painting. In the next video, you'll see me going back into this painting and going through a similar kind of discussion with you and within myself about what I want to do with this and where I actually end up going. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching and being here with me, and I'll see you next time.